Okay, everyone, it is the big day. We are facing off against West Ham, a Premier League side in the Conference League quarterfinal. If we win this, we're one step away from being in the final and potentially winning a European trophy in only our second season as Aberdeen manager. We're also currently battling Rangers for the second place spot in the league. So it's all to play for. Lots to get into in this video. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome back to the Aberdeen series. Hope you're all doing very well. Big, big game today. We are facing off in the second leg against West Ham in the Conference League. We've already played the first leg and I'll cover everything that happened in that match very soon. Now, depending on how that West Ham game goes, depends on how this video will be. If we win the West Ham match, there's a good chance that I don't actually release this part of the video and I'll just move on and record the semi-final because I don't want to drag this season out too much. Um, and the semi-final will be the episode and you'll never see this so I don't know why I'm saying it and um, otherwise though if we lose this game today I think I'll skip to the last game of the Scottish League season or at least the last one that matters to see if we can secure that second place spot and then we can move on in the next episode after that into season three so no idea how this is going to go today I might end up changing outfits between the games whatever it might be there might be a little gap basically between when I record this match that's coming up against West Ham and what happens after but the only way we can really do all of that is of course to show you the game so you saw us beat Traponzapur out in the conference league we then beat Dundee in the league 4-0 and then Motherwell 1-0 we lost to Livingston in the league which was a little bit annoying we didn't look that good but I can only imagine some players have got their eyes on this conference league game but in the first leg against West Ham which was at home we slightly annoyingly lost 3-2 we were very good but West Ham have just got the quality to take their chances they were 2-0 up after five minutes after 11 it was 2-2 and then 4 and now scored again later on but there's certainly some hope left in this I do want to show you the goals from that game though particularly when Vinny made it 2-1 in the 10th minute it was a phenomenal goal from him and um, so I want to show you that quickly let's slow this down but here's the first West Ham goal and just looking at their team by the way they've got the likes of Paqueta, Four Nows. these are very good players and we'll do really well to knock West Ham out if we do it it will be exceptional but we've got to go down now to the Olympic Stadium but here you go this is the second goal where Jack Harrison scored deflected Selected just happened to flick over Caro. Very, very lucky, if I might say. Um, and then Vinny decides to absolutely tear past the defender. And the finish is exceptional. Watch, watch that. Little chip curls into the top right, in off the post. That made it 2-1. And then straight afterwards, only a minute later, we completed the fight back with Ryan Duncan playing it in low to Diaz, who finished well at Fabianski's near post. Just got ahead of West Ham's captain of the day, Kurt Zuma. And um, then later on, just before the halftime whistle, if I remember correctly, it was for nows who went in past the goalkeeper and blasted it home in terms of the overall statistics we had better xg way better possession we were just unlucky on the night and west ham of course have premier league quality players so it was always going to be a tough game but we're hoping that we can somehow get something from this West Ham game. I have no idea how it's going to go. We'll record this and then like I say, depend on what happens, will depend on the next match that you see. But let's pick our team. It will be Roosing goal. It will be Fisher, Beso and Gagnon. Is that really what I want? You know what? I will go for that. We're then going to have Fabrizio Diaz, Cafu and then Ross McCorey. Uh, Vinny can play there. We'll have Ryan Duncan yet again. Oh no, he's quite tired, isn't he? In that case, maybe we do play Vinny on his weak side and Zavronek as the inside forward. We're going to have Duke on as well. Um, might be a bad choice that because Vinny did do really well in the first leg, but maybe it will surprise West Ham and we'll be able to beat them because of this tactical change. So we'll see how we get on. Their side doesn't include Declan Rice, so I can only assume he's either sold or injured, but they've got Fabianski, Kufal Zuma, and Maitland Niles, Suchet, Bowen, Fornals, Harrison, and Lucas Paqueta, who is the danger man, even if last game Fornals was the one that took it by the scruff of the neck. And But here we are. Can we do something today? Can we somehow pull off an upset away at West Ham's ground. I would imagine it's going to be very, very hard. And early on, we have a highlight with Keely Roos coming and claiming the ball from a corner. If after a minute we can make it 3-3, free -free, that'll be an exceptional start. But I imagine away from home, be very tough today. But Liam Scales is going forward, finds Zvronek, who, by the way, you know when the list in Football Manager comes out of the top 50 wonder kids in the world? 
He was somehow number one. Not quite sure how, but he was. Um, so good that we've got the best wonder kid in the world, supposedly, at our club. And Duke scores with his 40th goal of the season. A minute in, it's Besusian on the wrong side. At least I think it's the wrong side, but it, he doesn't matter, does he? He's gone down that right wing. He's played the ball in. Duke's finished. I mean, it was an easy finish in the end. Poor defending from West Ham. He gets ahead of his man. Between Kurt Zuma and the other centre-back, it's actually a good finish, you know, on the volley. Fabianski can't do too much about it. And a minute in, we've leveled the score. And who knows, there might be hope for us here that we'll go on to a semi-final. I don't know how it's going to go. But there is a highlight pretty much straight after with West Ham on the ball. And Fournals has got all the space in the world. Past Darnell Fisher at right back. He's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And he slots it just wide. And we make it out. And we can breathe again. Ten minutes in, the scores are still level. XG in West Ham's favour, possession in ours. For an Aberdeen side, no offence Aberdeen fans, to be able to dominate West Ham uh, possession and chances wise across two legs would be exceptional. And um, really shows how far we've came and how good form we're in as well. Um, but here's Darnell Fisher bursting forward, finds Vinny on the right hand side. Can he cut it back again for Duke? Maybe it will happen once more. He does try to play it in, it doesn't quite work. And West Ham are going to try and build out with Suchek. Maitland Niles. They're still building it out, West Ham. They've been playing it around for a little while now. And they've gone forward to Jack Harrison, who's turned backwards. Find Pablo Fornals. Fornals is running in. He seems to be the danger man. I said it was Paqueta, but clearly it's Fornals. Suchek with a header through the arms of Kili Roos. And it is 4-3 on the night to West Ham. Suchek is always going to be that aerial threat. He's came in with that late run, got his head to the ball. And I could say probably the goalkeeper should do better feel like he probably had a chance to save this, didn't he? Four nows crossed it. Um, yeah, he should be saving that, in my opinion. That's Butterfingers. Butterfingers from Roos in goal. And there's a reason that we're releasing him at the end of the year and we're going to try and replace him. He's not terrible. I just feel like we should get a better goalkeeper at this stage and someone that can stay in that goal for years to come. Whereas Roos is definitely just a stopgap right now for us. Since we scored our goal, it's pretty much been all West Ham. Possession is going back into their favour. They're continuing to gain XG and gather momentum in the game. But all it takes is that one chance for us and we might be able to take it into extra time. Should I say we've been terrible or I'm happy? I'm going to say I'm happy and the players reacted to it positively, which is all that matters. As long as they're happy and they're positive going forward, we might see some kind of result out of it. But let's see. Kufau to Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen's going to pull it back to Jack Harrison, who hits it on the volley and it's in in the end from Thomas Suchek yet again. And I feel like the game's getting away from us again. West Ham have got the quality players. Pretty much everyone on the pitch for them would walk in as the best player that we've got. Good ball in from Bowen. Then Harrison gets it. And is it a header from Suchek? No, it's actually a really good volley um, on his left foot. He swings round, bends it into the goal. And really, if we wanted to do anything in this tie, we needed to win that home leg, which was not an easy match at all. But if there was ever a time to give ourselves an advantage, it would have been them. But 60 minutes in here... Not quite working out for us. West Ham haven't played amazingly well, mind you, but Sutex just finished his chance as well. Let's see if we can't adjust things a little bit, though, and maybe cause something to go in our favour. So the first thing is Liam Scales is going to go centre-back. Gang Yong's off for McKenzie. I'm going to bring Diaz slightly further forward. I'm going to bring on Alan Forrest for Zavronek. I'm also... Maybe controversially going to take off Duke for Miofsky. I'm going to bring on Connor Barron in there for Ross McCorey as well. And purely because he's tired, I'm going to take Darnell Fisher out and bring on Jaden Richardson, despite a very good game so far. And hopefully them fresh legs can maybe get us one goal. And then who knows from there? Maybe something lucky happens, but we'll see. Here is a highlight after 66 and it's West Ham on the ball. And I imagine it might be another one for them, but they go all the way back to Fabianski. We're going to press them and hopefully win the ball back high. Uh, but we never know. Here's the long ball out to Ainsley Maitland-Niles on that left-hand side. He goes backwards to their new centre-back, who I haven't heard of. He finds Bowen. Bowen's in a lot of space to pull it back here. He's going to take the shot on by the looks of it. He does. It's deflected. Keely Roos comes in and claims it. And the highlight is not over. Maybe we're going to go up the other end and score. Oh, no. The highlight is definitely over. Connor Barron, though, with a free kick. And nearly... Nearly bends that past Fabianski. We come close there, but that isn't the end of a highlight. Just all we need is one extra goal here. And all of a sudden, it becomes very, very interesting in these last few minutes. Here's Esposito. He finds Maitland-Niles. And again, West Ham are going to go forward. We're trying our best here. You can see our players chasing them down, pressing, pressing, pressing. But West Ham have just got the quality to play it around us. And here's Bowen, who's obviously a very talented player. Finds Kufau. Ian Acho's in the middle. It 
does come out to him, finds four nows and four nows finishes, makes it 6-3. West Ham will be going through to the semi-finals, but I must say it's been a brilliant run from us to get this far to the quarterfinals of the Conference League. I'm very impressed with it. We weren't even given too much hope of making it out of the group, so the fact that we topped the group and then knocked another club out to get here, I can only say well done to the boys for that. And now our job will be to focus everything in on the league to try and secure that second place. No matter what, if we come third, we're in Europa League. If we come second, we'll be in the Champions League playoffs. And I think if you lose them, you end up in the Europa League anyway, or at least a qualification for the Europa League. Not too sure about how it works, but if we can be in some kind of Champions League playoff system, that would be insane for us as a club and would really be able to take us to the next level. But we are very proud of our boys' efforts here. We were underdogs. We gave it our best shot. They don't seem to be happy with that. Clearly, they think they could have beat West Ham today, but it wasn't to be. And now it will be one of Valencia, Sparta Prague, Nice or West Ham winning the Conference League. Fair play to them. We'll focus in on the league and I'll probably bring it back for one of either the Rangers, Hibs or Celtic games, whichever matters most by the time we get there. So let me play a few matches and see how we get on. Okay, here we are. We're on the last game of the season now. And since you last saw us, the Scottish League has split up so that the top six clubs all have to play each other. We played Hearts away and won, St Mirren at home and lost. And suddenly I started getting a little bit worried, but then we played Rangers and battered them 4-1. It was a brilliant match. And then we beat Hibs away 3-1 with two free kicks from Fabrizio Diaz. And our final game of the season is the hardest one you could really ask for. It's against Celtic. Now the good thing is one we're at home and two they've already won the league so I'm hoping that means they might somehow let their foot off the pedal a little bit. In terms of where we are in the league, Rangers are two points behind us and our goal difference is significantly higher. Now, I don't know if it comes down to head-to-head -to -head or goal difference in this league, but if we didn't beat Celtic and instead we drew and Rangers won their match, we'd finish on the same points. Goal difference, you'd assume we would beat them on. And if we're going on head-to-head -head record, then we beat them once here, lost to them there, but then beat them again in that match and the other match was a loss. So it's fairly even, uh, but I think we won by more goals. I don't if that means anything. I don't know what it will come down to, but basically it's all going to be very intense. And actually to only finish seven points away from Celtic and to only lose two more games than them, it's been a really impressive year from us. Obviously they've just got such quality players that they win most games and score loads of goals. But if we can somehow beat them today, we'll finish the season only four points away from Celtic, which would be absolutely massive considering the start of a save. The idea was to take a few years and to try and overthrow eventually the old firm and already Already in season two, we might, and it could go wrong, but we might be finishing above Rangers and already closing the gap on Celtic without spending a huge amount or anything like that. I mean, Celtic and Rangers in the transfer windows get linked to 20, 30 million pound deals. We could not do that if we wanted to. But anyway, let's have a look at our side. We're going for Roos in goal in his final match for the club. Darnell Fisher, Sevalich and Caro at the back with Mansour as the left back. His final game as well, because he is now joining Atletico Mineiro at the start of July for about £200,000. He wanted to leave. His contract was expiring at the end of next season. He decided he was not going to extend his deal, so he let him go. Um, Diaz being linked with £20 million moves now to Crystal Palace. It's all getting very intense. And by the sounds of the media reports, he wants to go. And even if we did have the finances to offer him a contract, I don't think he'd even consider talking to us. Um, Zavronic, do I want that? I think I would prefer Ross McCorry if he's available. I'll also play Duke up front, who has a chance here to score a goal a game in the league if he can score a few more in this match today. We're going to put Ryan Duncan and Vinny as our wide players and then in terms of who we want on the bench, I mean Dale Stevens has played his last game for the club now. Zavronic can go on the bench and I think we're pretty much set. Now the only thing I might potentially do is play Zhao Beso instead of Caro. I think we are going to go for that. So that is our team. That's what we're going to go for. Can we beat Celtic? I imagine during this match, the table is going to change a hell of a lot in terms of who's taking that second place spot. But we have a highlight already. Being at home is massive for us. Hopefully it means we can really give it a go and turn the crowd up. But here we are, two minutes in, playing some nice football. Darnell Fisher makes room. Ryan Duncan is in. And Ryan Duncan scores after two minutes. And that's the perfect start for us now. Because even if Celtic go and score, we'll still be drawing, which hopefully will be enough. But yes, great start from us. Exactly what we would have wanted. Some brilliant football ball base over ball playing defender very high up there finds Fisher who came in played it to Duncan and Duncan you thought would square it but instead he blasts it into the back of the net and we take a 1-0 lead against Celtic here and I'm just going to put the latest scores 
on the right hand side where Rangers are playing Hibs. Rangers are at home. You'd expect them to get a win, but so far, so good. Very happy with this. Possession may be in Celtic's favour after 15 minutes, but who cares? All that matters is that we put the ball in the back of the net and it's our homegrown talent, Ryan Duncan, who did the job for us. But 20 minutes in, there's another highlight. We are pressing Celtic very high here. McCorry with a pretty poor cross, but it does find Cafu, who's going to find Fisher on the edge of the box, I imagine. No, he's not. He's played it into the middle. Here's Fabrizio Diaz. He's been tackled. Not what you'd expect from our best player. And Lila Barda is breaking away. Fantastic player he is. But Mansour does well in his final game for the club. Gets back, gets in front of them. And Vinny has a chance to break away. It looks like Celtic have done well though. And it's now a one-on-one. -on -one. Darnell Fisher comes in with a brilliant tackle. Baso, Diaz, you feel like the end of the highlight's coming soon. So it might very well be an attack for us. Here goes Vinny. He's got room to square it into the middle if he wants to. He could go alone. He does go alone and he drives it just wide of the post. But that's a brilliant start to the game. 20 minutes in. Mansior isn't the only one who will be playing his final game today. I believe Roos, as we mentioned in goal. Anthony Stewart, who isn't appearing, is also playing, or at least would be playing his final match because he's leaving. His contract is expiring. He's currently club captain as well. And if Fabrizio Diaz stays, I will be handing him the captain's armband should he want it. But I imagine he's going to leave. But we'll do what we can in terms of keeping him. But we might have won a penalty here. Cafu falls under the challenge. And after 30 minutes, we have a chance to make it 2-0. And it'll be Zhao Beso, I believe, from the spot if the penalty is given. Penalty review ongoing. Penalty awarded. Zhao Beso has 16 penos, so I assume he'll be the one taking it. Maybe it's Duke if Duke's on the pitch. I'm not too sure. It will be Beso. He's already scored one for us and he scores another. Zhao Beso powers it in. His third of the season, I believe the third he scored from the spot as well. The new signing making his mark. We make it 2-0 after 30 minutes here against Celtic. And we couldn't be any happier, really. Rangers still 0-0 as well. So there's no pressure on us right now. 10 goal difference ahead. We are cruising to this second place spot and a Champions League qualification chance. I mean, there's a good chance we'd lose a qualification match and don't make the Champions League group stage. But if we do, that's mega money. And it's like a million pound a match when you're playing in the Champions League. So anything we can do to get further in that competition will be incredible. I could be wrong as well, but is this the season or at least season three when next season starts? I believe that's the season where the Champions League format changes and there's no longer any knockout rounds and it's all group based. So maybe we'll stand a chance there. But we have actually seemingly given away a penalty. But for me, that was really far outside the area. And the fact that the ref even thinks it might be, uh, I, I think it's stupid, right? That's not a penalty at all. It was outside the box, I'm sure. Penalty review, no penalty. As we thought, foul is outside the box. And actually, it's not even that close. And now we can go into half time, or at least I thought we could with a 2 0 lead. Rangers are going to try and score. Not Rangers, sorry. Celtic. Celtic have gone forward. I'm sure Rangers are trying to score in their match, but we've brought down Cameron Carter Vickers. And this time I do think it will be a penalty. I don't see why this one won't be given. Yeah, so it is a penalty. It's Fisher that's given it away. And can Keely Roos in his final game keep herself comfortable going into half time, or will Doyle get an equalizer? He blasts it in. Doyle does score. It's now 2 1. We're still going into halftime with the lead, which I definitely would have taken, but that does make us feel a little bit more, you know, oof, what's going to happen because Rangers have just scored to go 1-0 up. So we need to be careful here that we don't throw this game away. But so far, we are definitely happy. Just need to watch out that it doesn't get any closer than this. Celtic though, 50 minutes in, are going forward and Darnell Fisher for probably the sixth or seventh time this season is going to get suspended. He's got his second yellow card and that's definitely not what we want in a match where we're trying to hold on to get that second place spot. And all of a sudden, after five minutes of the start of this half and five minutes at the end of the last half, the game is completely switched around. Ryan Duncan, despite playing well so far, is going to come off. We're going to drop Ross McCorry back and we'll have to find someone else to play box to box. I think it will be Armand Zavronek here and we'll switch him with Cafu. Uh, I might also bring on Alan Forrest for a bit of extra legs when we go forward and Bojan Miofsky as well. We'll save some of the substitutes for a little bit, um, but now we are going to start to worry. We need to hold on. As you all know by now, this far into the series, I don't change mentality. I'm not going to adjust the tactics all that much. We're just going to leave it as it is because I think we invite too much pressure otherwise. And I still think we'll probably get another chance to score a goal at some point in this game, as long as we don't put, you know, 10 men back behind the ball. And here is Twanzebi though. He's going down the right-hand side. He puts the ball in. Roos makes a good save from Villabre and we make it out. Still 2-1, down to 10 men. 55 minutes and it's a free kick from Doyle long ranger Roos makes another good save shouldn't be conceding from there but does everything he needs to turns it around from the corner and we hang on for another few minutes Doyle with the corner in can we get it away it looks like 
we've survived this attack. And to be honest, I just don't want to see another highlight. I just want the game to pass by with nothing happening. That would be ideal. Here is the Labada though. He's gone out for another corner. They're going to keep the pressure on. We need to keep defending well here if we want to stand a chance of getting that Champions League place. Doyle in again. This time Roos does come to claim it, but he doesn't get full gloves on it. And thankfully Abada smashed it over and we survive yet again. But it's another long range free kick. This time we do manage to get the ball away. Forrest is going to try and chase onto Shaw here. Can we win that? We need to win that ball in the air. Sevilic does. Comes out to Cameron Carter Vickers. Abada, he's going to go again, isn't he? He's dribbling past our players for fun here. Oh no. That's not a penalty. He got the ball referee. Surely we're not giving away two penalties and a red card in one game. I really hope not. I thought that was a good tackle from Cafu. It's going to VAR. Penalty review. Don't give this ref. You don't want to. You know you don't. It was not a foul. He just got his leg stuck in. He won the ball. It went out for a throw in. Nothing wrong with that. No penalty. Thank God. Right. We live another day. Between 50 and 60 minutes here. It's been very intense for us as Aberdeen manager. Still, we've got XG in our favour. It looks like Rangers might have just had a men sent off though. I saw something appear on their screen then, like something had happened in their game. Doyle's through here though. Good save from Keely Roos. And we survive. We keep going here. We keep the scores at 2-1. We're doing all we can, but we might need some more fresh legs in a minute just to try and, you know, go five minutes without having a highlight where Celtic are on the ball. We do manage to get it away. It falls to a Abada. Uh, and yes, they've had a man sent off, have Rangers. Hopefully that means Hibs will go a bit more for it. Hopefully get a goal and make our life a lot easier. But 75 minutes in, things are looking a little bit calmer now. Let's make some changes. So we're going to bring on Innocente there for Diaz, who's very, very tired. Sevalic is also having a pretty poor game. So I'm going to bring on Joris Gangnon at the back and hope we can try and hold on here. It's a long range free kick. Roos makes another good save. 77 minutes. The scores are still exactly how we'd want them, despite Darnell Fisher trying to make life hard for us. And we're going to try and play it out the back here with 10 men on the pitch. I said we'll probably get one more attacking highlight at some point. I don't know if it will happen, but this looks fairly promising, although Twan Zabi's done well there. Beso wins it. Forrest, it's bouncing around. Lila Barda picks it up. Feels like this could be a goal for Celtic. Doyle's in. Another brilliant save from Roos. He's trying to earn himself that new contract, but unfortunately, I've already set him for release. And to be honest, I want to replace him anyway. But he's had a stormer of a last game for us here today. Fair play to him. Hopefully, this puts him in the shop window and he gets himself a nice new club uh, after this game is over. But right now, he is certainly my man of the match. Uh, we're doing really well. We're getting so much closer to that final whistle. A draw is not the end of the world, remember. We would hope that still means that we qualify as second place, but I just don't know how it works, so I don't want to rely on that. Uh, but forward Celtic go. to Talila Bada on the right-hand side. He's been tearing it up on the left, but Mansour's do been doing a good job. Keita Bolde scores. It was a brilliant, brilliant ball in from Twan Zabi. Basically volleys it and pings it right onto the head of Bolde. He doesn't have to do anything, just get something on the ball and it will end up in the back of the net. And he does just that. I was going to say, Mansour's done quite well today dealing with Lila Barda and he did it again there. It's just a shame there wasn't someone backing him up cover. But what a cross that is on the volley. And that's 2 2. And now we'll see what that means for the league table when it updates. Okay, by the looks of it, it does go to goal difference. So right now, we are above Rangers. We've just got five minutes to try and hold on, who have just scored a second. So it looks like Rangers win for sure. We just can't concede in these last five. And again, I'm not going to change anything. Oh no, not from a corner. Bernabeu's in. It's crossed in. We managed to deal with it. McCory heads it away. Comes back out to Abada. We keep the press on. Well, don't let him have a free shot. Abada shoots. It hits the post. Mansior gets it away. This is so intense, man. And we have another highlight. I just want the game to end. It's Miofsky though. Hold it up, Miofsky. He plays it in. Zavronek. Oh, how's he missed? How's he missed that? That could have been the job done for us. We could have got a win against Celtic too. Instead, we've got one minute left and there is a highlight. It might just be an end of game highlight or Celtic are going to completely destroy our morale here. McCory gets in and fouls up high at the pitch. Can't complain about that. Another 10 seconds have passed. 30 seconds to go now. Bernabeu for Celtic. Goes back to Welsh. They're playing it around the back. It's a long ball forward. That's exactly what we want. Gangnon just needs to be calm here. He finds Roos. Roos hits it long. 20 seconds to go. Miofsky needs to battle for it and he does exactly that. Win the ball in an advanced area. He's going to try and pull it back for Zavronek who hits it just over. As long as he hits it hard and far away, it'll take him a bit longer to get that ball back. And we have managed to do it despite Darnell Fisher trying to throw in the towel for us here, giving away a penalty and also then getting sent off. We've managed to hold on. Another game where we don't lose to the old firm, 2-2, and it was a good performance before that sending off. I really do think we would have walked the match, to be honest. 
and we've done it. We are officially second place. We have beat Rangers in the league, which I never would have expected at the start of the season. And that puts us as qualified for the Champions League. Let's have a look exactly what it means for us. It means we go into the third qualifying round of the Champions League. Now, I don't know how many games we have to win to get into the group stage. Let's have a look. So let's take Carabag, for example, here. They played in the third qualifying round. After that, they then have a playoff game. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we've got two games to win or two ties, should I say, to potentially make it into the Champions League proper. Um, but very, very proud of our side here today. We've done really well. Mansior bids farewell. Yeah, it was a brilliant game from him. I must say, if we go to schedule and take a look at the performances in that game, Keely Roos with a seven was exceptional. Mansior, though, man of a match on his final game. Thank you to him. He's been a brilliant servant to the club, as have many of these players. Our budgets for next season aren't great at all. I mean, about a million in the transfer budget. How much is that in the wage budget? Not much at all to work with. But I imagine with a big sale coming in potentially of Diaz, who I think will really struggle to keep, we will have some money to spend. But it's time to say goodbye to Mansour, potentially to Diaz as well. Who else is going? I'm not sure whether we'll keep Zavronek around at the club. I hope we could, but I'm not sure if we will. Anthony Stewart is going to leave as well. Dale Stevens, he's played his final match for the club. Dante Polvara is leaving. And of course, Keely Roos. So it's a new start for our Aberdeen side. Hopefully we can make the right transfers, bring the right people in and make ourselves a team that can hopefully compete for that Scottish League title again, but maybe even make it into to the Champions League proper or if not that qualify for the Europa League and give that a decent shot so we'll see how all of that goes in the next episode thank you all for watching and all your support so far on the series that's season two over loving this Aberdeen save so far long may it continue thanks to everyone who hits the like button and interacts and comments it really does help with the performance but most of all have a great day everybody and I'll see you next time thank you and goodbye